one of the biggest enemies you will ever face will come in the form of worry and anxiety. And in life, I'm sure we can all agree that there will be some things that are in your control that you'll worry about. There will be things that are out of your control that you will worry about. And while it's so easy to fall into a state of worry, in one of his teachings, Jesus gave us the message that we should not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And I believe that the Lord was telling us to be present in the moment, to be at peace today, to be joyful today. If you spend all your time and energy worrying, then you will always magnify the lack in your life or the pain in your life. Worry is all to do with if. If I can't pay this, if I don't get treated, if they find something. But instead, you should choose to adopt a new attitude where you do not worry about tomorrow. An attitude where you're thanking the Lord for today. You're thanking God for his goodness, even while you're waiting on your miracle. You're thanking God for what he has provided, even though there are things that you lack. When you do this, then you magnify Jesus Christ instead of magnifying your problem. I love the verse in Psalms 37 that says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That's what I call a faith verse. It's one that's meant to strengthen your faith. It's meant to encourage you to keep the faith. When we're struggling, it can be easy to think that God has abandoned us. After all, He has the power to deliver us. With just one word, He could make all our pain go away in an instant. And yet, this is not typically the way that God chooses to work. Sometimes He allows us to go through deep waters before providing a way out. But that doesn't mean He doesn't love us. That doesn't mean He has forsaken us. It simply means He has a better plan, even if we don't understand it. Matthew 6, verses 25 through 27. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? The Bible also says in Matthew 6, verse 34, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I believe that the Lord wants us to stop worrying, to stop pondering and wondering about what might happen tomorrow. Stop spending your effort and your energy thinking about what could happen tomorrow, or even what should happen. You are blessed in this very moment and on this day. One pastor said, don't borrow trouble. And that means don't worry about all the what ifs that we could face someday. What if there is a health crisis, a financial setback, or, or even some unimaginable type of problem? Don't borrow trouble for the future, but instead walk by faith and not by sight. So I encourage you today to stay present with the Lord. Stay present in your mind and in your soul. Do that by acknowledging Psalm 118 verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A believer in faith will pray and say, God stand with me in the storm I'm facing. 
A believer with worry will pray and say, God, what if the storm destroys me? What if it never ends? How come you're not stopping this? But for the person who wants to live their life in the way God intended, you have to decide. You have to make a choice. How will you handle worry? At one point or another, you will face something that will make you worry. It is wonderful that we are told to cast all your cares on Jesus. Everything that bothers you, cast it to the Lord. Everything that worries or concerns you, cast it all to Jesus. Because he cares for you with the deepest affection. And he watches over you very carefully. The word of God says in 1 Peter 5, verses 7 through 9, Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. When we let worry and anxiety consume us, it stops being adaptive. It becomes destructive. It becomes enslaving. Instead of focusing on God, we focus on all the things that could possibly go wrong, things that we usually have no control over. But there's someone who is in control, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Understand that. The God who made the heavens and the earth is the same God who is watching over us right now. He is intimately involved in every situation. He is infinitely good and infinitely wise. He sees everything that could possibly happen. He sees our worries, and yet he commands us not to fear. He commands us instead to trust him. He knows what's best for us, even more than we do. And he knows that in the end, Satan will be defeated. Love will conquer all, and the forces of darkness will be no more. See, no matter what's going on in our lives, God is in control. No matter what's going on in the world, God is in control. And whether you understand it or not, God is in control. Nothing is a surprise to him. Nothing catches him off guard. God sees the entire timeline of the earth from beginning to the end. God is in control. 